Political economy of urbanization in our country um, is a backward-looking affair. Um, and I think the, the politics, uh, the vocabulary of our politics in this country um, uh, is probably at the cusp of some kind of transition. Um, but uh, nevertheless, at this time, it feels it is looking in the rearview mirror. The political economy of, uh, of urbanization is basically, I'll take the case of Maharashtra is a, is a classic example where Mumbai, um, the greater metropolitan region of Mumbai, has, uh, as, as somebody was pointing out this morning, 12% of the Maharashtra electorate, which is um, a population of 112 million people. The portfolio of the urban affairs minister is always resolutely kept with the chief minister for the very simple reason that um, this is uh, given how scarce land is in the greater metropolitan region of Mumbai. It is a source of uh, considerable um, rent creation that then goes, uh, uh, I wouldn't say is dissipated um, into useless consumption um, and corruption, but is then used to fuel a political machinery that is very much focused on mobilizing the votes in rural Maharashtra. The delimitation bill was mentioned. Um, I think uh, the effects of the delimitation bill are still to be researched and still to be felt. My hypothesis would be that um, in a growing number of constituencies across the country, right, it is no longer possible to win an election without carrying the vote of the peri-urban voter. You've seen um, the numbers uh, from the Planning Commission, what plan share of plan expenditure goes to through rural ministries, um, or Ministry of Rural Development, and how much then ends up being managed by the Ministry of Urban Development. My hypothesis would be that if the government um, were to um, reallocate these resources, one should reallocate a significant amount of NREGA funding that is currently being allocate, allocated through the Ministry of Rural Development to the Ministry of Urban Development. And the political impact of that, this is a hypothesis, would actually be greater um, than if you continued business, uh, business as usual. Um, the third area is the importance of um, local voice. I think the empirical evidence is very strong that localization, decentralization of decision-making um, and empowerment is extremely important to delivering pro-poor solutions um, on the ground. Urbanization does require planning at, uh, and coordination between multiple service providers. Um, it's the complexity of delivering infrastructure and services um, in an urban context is more complex than in the rural setting. So the need for coordination is much, more, is much more acute. How much land in urban India is owned by government ministries um, of different kinds? Just a plain, simple inventory would be a good starting point. Again, hypothesis is very simple. It's very easy for the government to say, well, wow, it's too difficult, I can't tackle um, I can't unlock the value of this land, et cetera, et cetera. If housing is the most significant deterrent um, to you know, improving the quality of lives of the urban poor, um, I don't think that this solution can be left, or solution to that problem can be left entirely to the private sector. There has to be public sector governmental engagement in that in various ways. It can certainly start with town planning, you know, all kinds of partnership with the private sector, but I would submit also through the much more intelligent and poor, poor use of a huge amount of land that is sitting, lying useless um, um, in a number of government departments who, who are so jealously guarding this asset without proposing anything um, productive uh, for its uh, um, for its use. Public transportation 
is absolutely key. Urban economies are ecosystems of people of, from different walks of life. We cannot uh, hermetically seal uh, a city from the poor. Um, they have to be actively encouraged to participate in the economic activity of the city.